on January 1st, 2020, Swiss Arms Newhausen Sand changed its name to Sig Sour AG. Hi, Misha here. And this is going to be our first Patreon requested video explaining why the name change happened. For Patreons $5 and up, they can request we do a video and we will do our best to do it. <clears throat> and starting this January, we're kind of getting work on. But kind of bumped this one to the top because I thought it was a time sensitive one and one that um, needed to be addressed ASAP. So with that in mind, I pulled out some uh, Swiss SIG firearms. Talk about the company history and the name change. The company started off and I'm not even going to try the German pronunciation, sorry. <laughs> As the Swiss Wagon Company in 1853, making wagons. But it wasn't long before they got into firearms. They submitted a rifle for Swiss Army Trials, and it won. And it became known as the Model 1863, and 30,000 were ordered. And this is when the company would change its name to SIG, S-I-G, which stood for Swiss Industrial Company. And they would uh, continue manufacturing firearms, but they would have other interests as well. And here is one of their early builds. <clears throat> this is the Carabiner model 1893 for the Swiss Cavalry. Now the design itself is um, from Austria. It's a variant of the Mannlicher straight pull. But this one was designed and produced for Switzerland, chambered for 7.5 GP90. And the first ones made in Switzerland were made by SIG. They would produce 4,250 which was initially enough to arm the frontline cavalry. And then as more were needed, burn would take over. They would produce these between 1895 and 1896. The next kind of gun of note that I don't have is the Mondragon, which is really the first production military self-loading semi-auto rifle. Pretty cool. But it wasn't very successful for a myriad of reasons. So it was only around between about 18, excuse me, 1908 and 1911, at least main production. And then, of course, Switzerland is doing the Schmidt Rubin thing, turning into the K31. And kind of the next big thing that got SIG a lot of international acclaim and popularity was this pistol here. In uh, 1937, they would license from the French company SACM, the model 1935A, based on a Browning Petter patent. And they would work with several variations on this basic design, coming out with this variation in 1947, and it was adopted by the Swiss Army as its pistol, model 1949P49. Commercially known as the SIG P210. It is extremely well respected for its accuracy and just craftsmanship. It's a single stack 9mm pistol. And really kind of put them on the international map. This would be one of the first guns they would produce for potential export. Next up would be this gun over here. This is the 
STGW57. This is the Swiss battle rifle that would replace the K31. Self-loading, select fire. It still fired 7.5 GP11. Fed from 25 round mags. They never really got too heavy into machine guns, only doing a couple. Well, I should say machine guns, like, you know, literal, you know, medium heavy machine guns. This was technically a machine gun originally because it was select fire. But yeah, they would build these between 1957 and 1983. Although I think production ended earlier, but they still offered them. And this used the roller delay blowback system. Similar, but not the same as Set Me and G3, kind of a parallel development. And they would do a, a civilian version known as the AMT. And make several variations for other nations, and they would be tried out. This really got them on the international market again with rifles. Although not many people adopted them because of the price, many did try them out. Next, of course... This this all began in 1963 when Sig and Beretta partnered to produce a rifle for the then new 223 cartridge. The problem is they kind of wanted to go in a different direction. Beretta wanted to use a rotating bolt and Sig was really committed to the roller delay system even though they would also have a gas piston. So this partnership, even though it would yield the SG530 prototype, would fall apart by 1968. Uh, Beretta would go on to make the AR-70 and eventually AR-7090. And eventually SIG would see the light going to the rotating bolt as well, making the SG540, which actually they would license to Menurhin in uh, France as well as FAMI in South America. Then in 1979 they would submit an updated version for Swiss Army Trials again is the SG-541. It would be adopted, or I should say selected, not adopted, in 1983. Improved in the following year, becoming the SG-550 with the first rifles being delivered to the military in 1986 and being fully adopted as a STGW-90 in 1990 and are still the standard issue to this day. Another pistol of acclaim, and really where our story kind of begins, is this, the P220. In the 70s, the Swiss Army was needing a new handgun. Not that this wasn't a good one, but it was starting to be outdated. It was single action only, expensive. They wanted to go to a double action, more modern, more affordable gun. And also at the same time, the Swiss government had passed new legislation, making it very advantageous for any Swiss company wanting to have a global market export sales to partner with a foreign company. So... SIG in Neuhausen, Switzerland, partnered with J.P. Sauer and Son in Germany. And you can tell that because this does have a few Sauer elements, like the decocker. And they would produce this pistol, and it would be adopted as the P-75 pistol, 1975. And then, a short time later, depending on where you exactly look, either SIG just straight out bought... J.P. Sauer, or they merged with them. It doesn't really matter. They also acquired the company of Hammerly. Okay? So this is where Sig Sauer comes from. Based in Switzerland and Germany. The first of these to be imported in the U.S. was in the late 70s by Browning Arms Company under the BDA name, and they were Rollmart Sig Sauer System on the side, but this wouldn't last long. By 1980-81, Browning would drop off. And then in 1985, a new company 
would open in America. SIG Arms, based out of Tyson's Corner, Virginia, would be established to import German and Swiss guns, starting off with the P220 and P230. They would then move to Herndon, Virginia in 1987 to a larger facility, and that's when they would start to import the STGW-90 as the SG-550. And then SIG Arms would move to New Hampshire in 1990. And the product line would continue to expand slowly but surely from there. For example, the P229 in 1992. However, by the 90s, the Cold War is over, even though Switzerland, Switzerland was neutral. And um, SIG no longer felt its firearms division was worth hanging on to. It had gotten into the food and beverage market some time ago especially involving packaging, preservation, and whatnot. And so, in the late 90s, it put up its firearms division in Newhausen for sale. And it was purchased by an investment group, a holding company, owned by Michael Luke and Thomas Ortmeier, known as the Luke and Ortmeier Group, in October of 2000. So, SIG, as a company, continues, even to this day, but it has no firearms capability. The factory, with everything, machines, equipment, parts, employees even, was split off, becoming Swiss Arms Neuhausen, SAN, and was nominally independent, but under the ownership of the Lutmar Group. So, as far as SIG arms in the U.S., they weren't doing real good in the early 21st century. Had of only a hundred or so employees. They would end up coming under the sway and being nominally bought out by the same holding group as well. And then they would also get in, they would kind of get away from just pistols and start doing the SIG 5.56 and getting into the AR-15 market. And then SIG Arms would change its name to SIG Sauer Incorporated, still in Exeter, New Hampshire. And so we also have SIG Sauer GmbH in Germany and Swiss Arms Neuhausen in Switzerland. Unfortunately, Swiss Arms Neuhausen wasn't getting a lot of orders and was kind of financially rocky. In 2012-2013, a Belgian airsoft company called, I believe, Cybergun offered to buy the name Swiss Arms Neuhausen, S-A-N, for several million dollars, which was an influx of cash that they desperately could use. And part of the agreement was that Neuhausen could use the name for five years royalty-free, and then after that, would have to pay money to the Airsoft company for the name. Yeah, they sold their name, but you know, needs must. You gotta remember, this was kind of before the SG-553 was coming into the U.S. Not really much had been happening. Um, yeah. So they sold their name thinking, heck, we may not even be here in five years. Well, as it turns out, since that time, their fortunes have increased. Um, first, they had M plus M importing. Then Sig Sauer Incorporated would Im briefly import the SG-553. And since 2015, 
uh, John Doe Investigations, JDI, now San Imports, has had the exclusive to import from Newhausen. On top of that, they've had more military contracts, both inside and outside of Switzerland. They've expanded the product line to things like the SG-751. Yeah, things are, I'm not saying they're completely out of the clear now, but they're definitely having an upswing. Great! Except the five years ended in 2018. So in 2019, the owner, the manager, I guess I should say technically, of the factory in Newhausen had to actually pay a royalty to an airsoft company. Something that, um, as you can imagine, wasn't uh, great. So, he didn't want to do that again. Don't blame him. So he was going to have to change, the company needed to change their names unless they wanted to pay royalties. Well, they couldn't change it just to SIG, that's already taken. But they legally could still change it to Sig Sauer. Now, Sig Sauer AG is just uh, meaning it's a Swiss company. So much like Sig Arms had done a decade earlier, SAN, Swiss Arms Newhausen, is now Sig Sauer AG. So now we have essentially three companies all named Sig Sauer. The US one has incorporated INC at the end. The German one has GmbH. And the Swiss one has AG. And so that's why the name change had to happen pretty abruptly on January 1st of 2020, unless they wanted to pay more royalties. Now that's a simplified version, and I'm sure I've got some things wrong, but that should give you a general gist of what is going on and answer our Patreon subscribers question. So going forward guns will be marked Sig Sauer or Sig Sauer AG but they will be the same as Swiss Arms Newhausen San which was the same as the original SIG, because it's all still the same factory, the same building. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that guns made in the 80s are the exact quality of guns made today, or, you know, one way or the other. I'm just saying it's the same factory. Just much like how Remington, Colt, Ruger, uh, IWI, <laughs> they all, all these companies change names and change ownerships and change management over time. So it's as real as it gets. I mean, they're, that you know, the company that's still known in Switzerland as SIG is actually, I think, owned by a Canadian company now. Or, or maybe it's New Zealand. I lost track. They've been bought out and sold. It seems like these days, every company is owned by some other company. But yeah, that's the situation. Just basically contracts and agreements and everything else. And who's to say without that infusion of cash six years ago that they could have made it? Because things got pretty uh, pretty tight for them, just as they had done a few years previous for uh, the American company. But I uh, hope that answers some questions. If you, if you do have any more, I'll try my best to answer them, but... Um, Again, I'm just trying to simplify and give a general idea that, that SIG Sauer AG is the same as Swiss Arms Newhausen. Same, literally, this is, you know, a rebranding. But, uh, but yeah, we greatly appreciate all of our Patreons, and we will start working on these $5 and up requests. And if you're interested in more of the history, we have an entire playlist. Alrighty, guys. Well, I just wanted to get this one done pretty quick while it was in... Kind of a timely thing. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, please check out the link below. This is Misha, and we'll catch you very soon next time.